Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, I want to go over question three of, from set two of the 2019 AP Macroeconomics Free Response Questions. And uh, this question really takes us back to basics, which is the production possibilities curve and comparative advantage. So uh, we've got two, two countries, I should say here, Sweden and Norway, and they use an equal quantities of resources to produce uh, food and capital goods. And so when I'm looking at this, the first thing I'm going to notate here is the fact that this is definitely an output problem uh, because we're using equal number of resources. So just thinking about that in my head. And so for A, it wants us to draw the PPC for Sweden and label uh, its food and capital goods output and then label a point that's efficient, inefficient, and unattainable. So uh, several points here if you know how to draw a production possibilities curve. So... Um, I'm actually going to put mine right here. I tried to squeeze as much as I could onto this page here. And um, it wants us to put food on the uh, horizontal axis. And then we've got capital goods on the vertical. And uh, here's our PPC. We'll put it just like that. And then it wants us to label the points. So this would be 100 capital goods or 50 uh, uh, food goods, right? Food goods, food units, whatever. Um, and then we have to label these points, E, I, and U. Um, and so I'll do each one a different color just so they're visually appealing. Uh, so we've got E for efficient. So that's a point on the curve. We're efficient if we're on the curve. Uh, green here is going to be inefficient. So a point inside the curve. We're not using all of our resources. And then finally, red here for unattainable, which means we don't have enough resources to produce this level of output. So that's A and B. All you had to do there was just draw the PPC, which um, you should have learned that really early on in the course. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. And then just put I, E, and U on the graph. So nothing too, too bad here. And that should have gotten you probably a couple points, maybe three points, who knows, um, on uh, that part of the question. And then we move on to C, um, and I kind of feel bad that I'm taking up a whole page here just for what's going to amount to one word, but it's just kind of how that worked out. It says, assume Sweden moves from producing 20 units of food and 60 units of capital goods to producing 30 units of food and 40 units of capital. What's going to happen to uh, economic growth? And the answer here is we have to look at capital goods because, remember, economic growth happens when we um, – produce more capital goods because capital goods are tools which allows us to make other goods and services. And what's happening here is we are going um, in this question from uh, 60 units of capital, right? We have 60 units of capital. And now we're going down to 40 units of capital, right? So we're, we're producing not as much capital as we were before, right? And uh, so, therefore, the answer here is going to be a decrease because we are not going to be producing as much capital as we were uh, before. We're going to prioritize you know, present consumption, and so we're not going to get as much economic growth as before. So you just had to put decrease there. You didn't have to explain. Uh, D and E is kind of where it gets a little trickier because this is where we're going to have to do some calculations with comparative advantage and then our good friend terms of trade there at the end with letter E. So uh, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and uh, draw the box here just so you get to see the whole process here. I thought about copying the box over, but I want you to just see you know, how someone answers the whole question without having anything really there to, to make it easier. So we've got country and then we've got food, and then we've got capital goods. And we've got uh, Sweden, and we've got Norway, and we've got 50, 30, 100, and 120. And so I'm going to go ahead and what I need to do here to find comparative advantage is calculate opportunity costs. Uh, the formula that I teach my students for this for output problems is other over current, which means the, no, the other number in the row divided by the current number, the current box you're looking at, that number. So if we look at Sweden here, if we're in the 50 box, the 100 is the other, the 50 is the current, and so it's going to be 100 divided by 50, which is 2. 
And the question here is to what? Well, if you're producing food, you're giving up capital goods, so that would be the opportunity cost. So I'm going to do to cap. I'm just going to abbreviate there if you don't mind. And the reciprocal will go in the other box. So this is 50 divided by 100, which is one half of a food unit. Okay. And at the bottom, 120 divided by 30 is going to be four capital goods. And then the reciprocal, one fourth of a food. So now that I've got that set up, I can go ahead and answer uh, D and E here. So for D, it wants to know who has the comparative advantage in capital goods. Well, you have to ask yourself, would you rather give up half of a food unit or a fourth of a food unit? Well, I'd rather give up a fourth of a food unit because it's less, right? So the answer here is Norway is going to produce uh, and has the comparative advantage in capital goods. And the reason why is it gives up less food to produce a capital good. So there you go. And then E, which um, I think for most students is probably the hardest part of this question because terms of trade does tend to be pretty difficult here uh, for some students. So I'll try to you know walk you through this um, with E. It says, based on the table above, or what I've drawn here, identify a specific number of units of capital goods that could be traded for 10 units of food and be mutually beneficial. So what they really want you to do here is find the terms of trade for, for food, like one food unit for how many, what's the range of capital. So what you go ahead and do here is you go ahead and write one food for, and then what's going to be the range of capital goods? Well, you go to the table and you look at your opportunity cost and you find where the capital goods label is and you make that a range. That's why putting these labels here is so important because it helps you do the terms of trade really easily. So I see my capital goods are two and four, so I make that a range. So it's going to be two to four. I'm just going to abbreviate this as cap for capital goods. Now, unfortunately here, the, it, it's asking about 10 units of food, not one. So I need to multiply all these numbers by 10. So this is going to be 10 food for 20 to 40 capital goods. Okay. There's my range that's acceptable. So I just have to pick a number between 20 to 40, write it down. So any number between 20 and 40 would have worked here. And I'm honestly shocked that they're um, giving you that much of a flexibility there uh, with a question. But hey, we'll take it. And uh, so I went ahead and put 30 capital goods right dab in the middle there. So that is the answer to letter E or one possible answer. You could have done 21, 39. You know, any of those numbers would have worked. Uh, several possibilities there. So that is the answer to question three of set two of the 2019 AP Macroeconomics free response questions. Until next time, have a great day.